With this session update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. Today on the Senate floor, lawmakers unanimously passed a bill that would create an account to assist municipal utilities in paying for the remarkably high cost of natural gas during the February polar vortex. Here are some highlights. Over the course of the last uh, month or so, uh, there has been uh, a fair amount of discussion, uh, not only within the halls of the legislature, but certainly in the media, about the uh, polar vortex which occurred on or about uh, February 12th. It lasted till the, the 17th. Uh, most of the uh, effect was in Texas from the standpoint of, uh, of uh, chaos and, and unfortunate circumstances uh, as the natural gas lines down there froze and as other utilities uh, for reasons uh, which are varied uh, failed to operate uh, as they should. Uh, it put uh, tremendous pressure on the natural gas system all the way up through the central United States. As, uh, as it is, most gas companies buy in advance about 75 percent of their gas, but they uh, buy on the so-called spot market about 25 percent. And as the uh, events of the uh, Texas uh, uh, chaotic experience uh, unfolded, uh, that natural gas, buying on the spot market, that 25 percent allocation, that got very expensive. A decotherm of gas, natural gas that cost three dollars in, in uh, 2000, uh, pardon me, in February 11th of this year, last uh, this year, uh, three dollars on February 11th. During the period of February 12th to uh, February uh, 17th, cost 231 dollars. So enormous price differences there that have uh, nowhere to fall but other than the, uh, than the customers. We're not dealing with customers today from the standpoint of this bill, Mr. Chairman, but, or Mr. President, but we're dealing with trying to assist uh, municipal utilities across Minnesota. There are 33 of them which serve about 85 cities. Uh, they are in a situation that is rather urgent from the standpoint of uh, needing to uh, pay for to pay their suppliers the natural gas that they had to buy during this very, very critical but yet very expensive time. So, uh, Mr. President and members, what this does is it creates a structure where we create a polar vortex account within the, uh, within the Department of Commerce. It's a special fund. And we will obviously uh, fund that at the, as proposed within the bill at $15 million. Uh, utilities then will, and this is called, this is municipal utilities, not the investor owned, municipal nonprofit cooperative utilities will then in fact uh, file applications for that money uh, to assist them in their paying of their suppliers for the natural gas again that they had to buy and which they uh, have indebtedness for. Uh, it's much difficult, it's very difficult for municipal and, uh, in, uh, entities like uh, natural gas companies to go to the bank and borrow money. We had, uh, Mr. President, uh, members, uh, a finance committee meeting this morning. We heard from the uh, Municipal Utility Association on it. It's very difficult from the standpoint of just going down to the bank and getting that money. They've got to file or go through routes of certificates and indebtedness and and lots of uh, arduous uh, attorney time and, uh, and certainly financial, financial, financial time to, to get that done. And uh, while all municipal utilities don't need this, about 16 out of the 32 do. And so, again, this uh, puts into structure a process through the Department of Commerce where loans can be given. These are five-year, up to five-year, no interest loans, uh, through it again, the Department of Commerce, two municipal utilities, gas utilities, and uh, with repayments then going to the general fund uh, over the course of that five years. I want to stress to everyone the urgency of this, and for many members, you may be looking at this and thinking that this is coming out of the blue, and why do we need to act on this so quickly? Well, we all remember the stories from back in February with the polar vortex and the disaster that happened in Texas. Thankfully, our systems here in Minnesota did not fail. No one was without heat, no one was without electricity. But because of the way our municipals operate and the way they purchase their gas, we heard that 
incredible increase in cost that they incurred for what they do not pre-purchase. And for the last month, those of us who are on the Energy Committee have had hearings. We had a joint hearing with the other body discussing what can we do to help these groups out. And we knew that the municipals needed help in a very short term. We finally got the details together. That is why this bill is here and here today. And the urgency is that because we're on break next week, we have to get this done so that the municipals, as they're preparing to send out their bills to their customers, know what they're facing and do not have to send out bills to customers for $600 or more. I think we have to understand that this, uh, this recent increase affects a lot more than, than uh, just residential customers. I had a school district contact me uh, with the uh, 13 grades. They uh, have probably a, an enrollment between 600 and 650 students. And, um, and their, normal, their normal gas bill for the last month would have typically been somewhat under $10,000. And the bill they received totaled $93,000. Now we understand that the complications of the pricing system and, and what have you are more than what we can deal with in, in one simple bill. But at least in the initial uh, element here, um, while there will be probably additional legislation that may come from a national level uh, to deal with the pricing structure as it occurred, uh, we also have to make sure that we can assist our municipals in providing some type of a uh, payback process for their customers that doesn't put everyone in a financial bind. And we do have an urgency that our municipal gas utilities need us to address, and we have to do it. The timing has already been covered, but the gist of it is our body has to respond to emergencies quickly. And by passing this legislation, we'll be sending a message with this revolving loan fund to our municipal utilities that we are there for you at a time when they really need it. We also have a larger issue, which has been touched on here, but which I want to talk about, which is the impact of this natural gas price spike on Minnesota ratepayers. The Public Utilities Commission, in a joint House and Senate Energy Committee meeting, testified that $485 million is the impact of the natural gas price spike on Minnesota ratepayers, and that is just the residential ratepayers. This body is going to have to take action to protect those ratepayers, all Minnesota ratepayers, low income, middle class, everybody, and it will also involve us addressing commercial, residential, and industrial. I thank you for paying attention to this important issue because it is, uh, and again, I believe, as I said earlier, it's the beginning of the story, but it's an important beginning because our municipal utilities uh, almost desperately need our help right now. If we get this out the door before we uh, leave on uh, recess, uh, that would be fantastic, I think, from the standpoint of uh, doing the good work of the Minnesota Senate as well as uh, from the standpoint of, of uh, helping greatly the municipal utilities across Minnesota that, uh, that had debts, they have debts, and they need to pay them, and they need to figure out how to do this. This low interest loan program will help them a lot. There being 66 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to. To continue following these issues and more, watch legislative coverage Monday through Friday on the PBS Minnesota channel or visit our website, www.senate.mn/media